I recently did a video on the ancient Achaemenid ceremonial capital of Persepolis. And, since many of you enjoyed that and wanted to see other sites of ancient Iran, I thought I'd also show you a bit of nearby Nakshi Rustam. Just four miles away from Persepolis, Nakshi Rustam is the place where the builders of that city were laid to rest about 2,500 years ago. Nakshi Rustam is not the original name of the site. In fact, no one knows what it is. By perhaps the 14th or 15th century, the site's actual purpose, and those who had once been laid to rest here, had long been forgotten. And so the locals named it Nakshi Rustam, meaning picture or mural of Rustam, because several of the reliefs carved into the cliff were thought by the locals to depict the hero Rustam from the great Iranian epic, the Shahnameh. In reality, they're actually reliefs of various Sasanian kings, which we'll get to shortly. Carved into the towering cliff of Nakshi Rustam are the final resting places of four of the most powerful rulers of the ancient world, namely Darius I, his son and successor, Xerxes, and two of their successors specifically Artaxerxes I and Darius II. Darius I, better known as Darius the Great, was the king during whose reign the Achaemenid Persian Empire expanded to its greatest extent, from the Indus River in the east to the shores of Libya in the west. His son, Xerxes, was also extremely powerful and is best known for launching in 480 BC a massive invasion to conquer the Greek mainland. While the Persians defeated the Spartan king Leonidas at the Pass of Thermopylae and sacked the city of Athens, Xerxes's forces ultimately lost the campaign due to the decisive Athenian-led naval victory at Salamis. Artaxerxes I and Darius II were also very powerful rulers, but not as famous as their two predecessors. These four kings were laid to rest here at Nakshi Rustam in separate chambers carved high into the cliff. Today, they're all empty due to being looted in antiquity, but it's believed that they must have held the bones of each king as well as some personal objects that may have been of value to them. The facade of each is roughly in the shape of a cross with a door at its center and intricate reliefs chiseled around it. The earliest is that of Darius the Great. Above the door of his burial chamber is a depiction of 30 men who represent the various satrapies and subject peoples that made up the Achaemenid Empire. They're holding up a dais, or type of throne bench, upon which the king stands on top of a three-step platform holding a bow in his left hand and facing a fire altar in worship. Fire is the primary symbol of Ahura Mazda, the Lord of Light and Wisdom, who is the supreme being in the Zoroastrian religion, which the Achaemenid kings are believed to have practiced in some form. The winged figure hovering above is today commonly called the Faravahar, but what it represents in this particular context is hotly debated among scholars. Historically, many of them had claimed that it was a representation of Ahura Mazda, but this is often rejected today by those who maintain that the Achaemenids were Zoroastrians, and that in the Zoroastrian religion, anthropomorphic representations of Ahura Mazda are forbidden. The Greek traveler and historian Herodotus who toured parts of the Achaemenid Empire in the 5th century BC seems to confirm this when he wrote that unlike the Greeks, the Persians did not believe that the gods had human qualities. Instead, several scholars have made the case that the winged figure was meant here to depict a protective spirit that also confirmed upon the king his divine right to rule. Darius I has an inscription written beside these reliefs, confirming that it is indeed his tomb. Part of this inscription reads, A great god is Ahura Mazda, who created this earth, who created yonder sky, who created man, who created happiness for man, 
who made Darius king, one king of many, one lord of many. I am Darius, the great king, king of kings, king of countries containing all kinds of men, king in this great earth far and wide, son of Histaspes in Achaemenid, a Persian, son of a Persian. He then goes on to list all of the countries, represented by the men holding up the dais, over whom he ruled over, including Media, Elam, Parthia, Bactria, Babylonia, Assyria, Egypt, Nubia, parts of Greece, India, and others. The other three tombs more or less have the same relief, but unlike that of Darius I, they don't have inscriptions to help identify them. However, scholars and art historians believe that they are those of Xerxes I, Artaxerxes I, and Darius II based on minor but noticeable differences in the artistic styles used to embellish them. Since they had evolved over time, these can then be used to approximately date each tomb. During the time I was there, Xerxes's tomb was covered with scaffolding for restoration purposes, but here's a photo of what it normally looks like. Below the tombs and carved into the cliffs are eight reliefs of various kings dating to the Sasanian era. The most famous one is a relief depicting the victory of the Sasanian king, Shapur I, over the Roman Emperor Valerian, who is seen kneeling before him. It was also under restoration when I went, but this is what it would normally look like. The other man in the relief is likely a depiction of the Roman Emperor Marcus Julius Philippus, better known as Philip the Arab, who though not defeated in battle by Shapur, was forced to recognize the king's sovereignty over Armenia and pay him a considerable sum of 500,000 denarii. Other Sasanian kings, including Shapur II, Varam II, Hormuz II, Narse, and the dynasty's founder, Ardashir I, also have their own reliefs carved into the cliff. One of the most interesting and mysterious structures at Naqsh i Rustam is a large, rectangular prism shaped building with a staircase in front called Kaba'i Zardosh. Zardosh is the common name used by many Iranians today for the prophet Zoroaster, also known by his Avastan name, Zaratustra. However, this stone building was only called Kaba'i Zardosht around the 14th century because many thought that it might have once been a Zoroastrian fire temple. No one knows what its actual purpose was. What is known is that it was built during the early Achaemenid period because the architectural style and stones used for this building are similar to those found in Pasargade, the capital city built by Cyrus the Great. While there aren't any inscriptions from the Achaemenid period, there are some attributed to the Sasanian king, Shapur I, as well as his high priest, Kartir. Shapur's inscription is similar to that of Darius I in that he gives us his lineage and then names the lands he ruled over as king, while Kartir's basically speaks of his service to the crown and his many accomplishments as high priest. Neither of them, though, tell us anything specifically about the original purpose of the building itself, which is what I really want to know. Hopefully, one day. So, I hope that you now have an idea of what the site of Naqshi Rustam looks like and its significance in ancient Persian history. Thanks for watching. And as always, I'd really like to thank the channel's patrons for making videos like this possible. These include, but are not limited to, Grandkek69, Yap de Graf, Pasta Frola, Michael Lewis, Daniel Allen, Danny Van Eck, Wenix TV, Robert Morgan, Frank, Tim Lane, Sebastian Hurtado Correa, Michael Trudell, Leader Titan, Micah G, John Scarberry, Andrew Bomer, Monty Grimes, Franz Robbins, Cyrus Smear, Diane Astra, Nimrod Nir, Brendan Redman, 
Faridun Dada Chanji, Jimmy Daruwala, Anahita Debu, Gulistan Debu, Sher Kam, Farhad Kama, and all of the channel's patrons on Patreon for helping to support this and all future content. Check out the benefits to being a Patreon member, and if you'd like to join, feel free to click the link in the video description. You can also follow History with Sai on Instagram, Facebook, and Twitter, as well as continue to listen to special audio programs on the History with Sai podcast. Thanks again, and stay safe.